Welcome to today's uh, webinar, everyone. My name is Anisha Mohammed, and I am the technical specialist here at Soft Solutions. Um, I hope that you're all keeping safe, first of all, during these um, this wild weather. Um, it's been very crazy and hectic, but I hope you're all keeping safe. Um, just hopefully everything goes well. And so what we'll do is we'll get started um before we do i just want to thank you all for taking your time out to attend this webinar so we'll just go through some basics of the enable rmm and to start off with um the enable rmm so a quick overview it is a remote monitoring and management tool um so it's used to monitor network um and the devices on the network so devices could be servers desktop laptops uh, mobile devices and um, rmm also allows you to do remote access so that in the case um, if anything happens uh, you can access the endpoints and respond as soon as possible and it also um, has the ability to do patch management which is really important so that um, you know the bug fixes or any security vulnerabilities are addressed and it also provides um, effective reporting so that you always know what's going on in the network and you can you know jump into action before anything happens and address anything that's pending or that's come up and prioritize those um and the importance of RMM. So RMM provides full visibility into the network um, and it helps you identify anything that needs urgent attention. And it aims to help you ensure that your client's environment is always monitored and managed so that it's always secure. Being able to see everything in a dashboard, um, especially in a single pane of glass, is very useful because it lets you pinpoint any areas that need attention before anything can even happen. Um, and you can also generate reports and um, for the endpoint and see um, whether um, you know if there's anything that um, that you may not have realized that you can now um, pick up and work on. Um, and in the case that something does happen um, with remote access, you can quickly respond. So that saves you traveling time from having to go on the site. Um, you can just jump in into action straight away with one click remote into the device and um, just you're on your way to find out what's wrong and fix it. Um, also, RMM allows you to stay on top of patch management through policy so that devices are up to date. Um, with any patches that can address bug fixes, um, any new features, any security um, vulnerabilities. And also RMM allows you to automate the process, customize patches for um, certain devices, or um, manually approve or deny the patches. So now we'll jump into the exciting part, which is the um, demo. So what I'll do is I'll take you through um, the dashboard and how to add an agent and just the basics some adding checks um, and stuff like that so let's jump into it so the way that the rmm um, works is each endpoint will have an agent installed on it and that agent is what will be collecting all the data um, from those endpoints and then setting it to the dashboard for you to have full visibility into the endpoints and I'll just switch over to the um, RMM dashboard so the good thing is that it's web-based so you access it from a browser um, it's also very secure because it's protected uh, with 2FA authentication and also um, there is no hosting required. So once you've logged into the dashboard, you've entered your login, um, popped in all your 2FA, um, you've got this lovely looking dashboard. So it's very straightforward, simple to see. So over here on the left, you've got your clients and the sites. Um, and if you click into one of them, you've got your servers, workstations, um, which you can have a look at. Um, if you click mix that service and workstations together, there's mobile devices, network devices, um, networks. And up the top here, you've just got um, lots of categories that you can click into to do a lot of configuration and the key things to note here are the dashboard so you've got um, the overview option for the dashboard and this just gives you a nice overview into at first look first sight into everything so it gives you numbers it gives you data that um, you can 
um, quickly um, like realize what's happening with. So you've got, you can see how many devices there are, what the problem devices are, um, any 24 seven check problems. You've got numbers for problem workstations. You've got server statuses. You've got what operating systems are there. There's Windows, there's Mac. Um, and it's just a really good way to have a look at first sight. And then you've got the monitor devices view, which gives you, um, it shows you all your clients. You can select and filter by clients and site, but you can see all the monitor devices that, that um, are on the dashboard um, that has the agents installed. And you can see um, if it's a server, if it's a workstation, um, you can see uh, the operating system, Windows or uh, Mac, um, and you can see the IP addresses. Um, what you can also do from this one is you can add a device. Um, and the other view that we have here is the unmonitored devices. So when you see unmonitored devices here, that means those devices don't have an agent installed on it. So that means like, you know, you should, install the device um, agent on that device so that it's also monitored and you can um, keep track of it and you know make sure nothing happens and once we go back to the dashboard oops so the next um, key thing is obviously you need to know how to install an agent so before you do that i'll just if you go to the file tab um, and you want to add a client so for example if a new client you want to add them on you can go to add department um, add the client name and go through and um, add the required information if you want to add a site you'll just click on add site over here um, but to add an agent, there are um, three ways to add an agent. So one is you go up here to the agent tab and you click add device and you click your client, um, select the site um, and then select the operating system, Windows, Mac, Linux, and then you go next. And what that does is it creates a one, um, one click installer. So downloads um, installer and a zip file and then you click into the zip file and you run the installer and the agent is installed. Um, you can also zip that back up and then send it to another machine and then on that machine you can open the installer and install the agent that way. And um, another way you can do it is you can just log into the dashboard and then on each individual machine, you can go to download agent and download the agent um, that's suitable for that operating system. And another way that you could do it is through um, the site GPO installation package um, and that helps you deploy agents um, over the network. And the next thing that you want to be able, um, the next key thing that's a basic for RMM is uh, take control. So that's being able to remote control. So for example, you need to remote access a device um, immediately and how you would do it, you would click onto device. So for example, I've got, we'll go to, uh, let's just click on, Let's just go, let's just click on this one for example. So for Caroline, if we right click, um, you should be able to go to remote access here and select it control. And then that should give you access into the device. Um, unattended access and attended access is all supported. And if you go to um, remote background, then you can, open up the uh, command line um, remotely and enter commands into there um, so that will work in the background so it won't affect um, the endpoints activity like it won't affect their work at all um, you'll just do your command line and whatever you need to do here and it'll just work silently in the background um, the other key thing that you want to um, know about is the patch management so the way that patch management works is um, you go to settings and you go down to patch management so if you look in settings you've got a lot of configuration that you can do um, this general settings will chart users add users user accounts permissions um, they take control remote background patch management um, it's a lot of settings but we're focusing on patch management so for patch management you can go to settings 
And what you can do here is you can sell, um, turn patch management on or off for the servers or workstations. You can expand it to select certain um, locations. So if you only want to turn it on for a certain uh, client or a certain site or a certain workstation, um, you can do so. So if you want to do it for all, you'll just go on here. So that's turned it on for all servers here. Um, and then you can select the policy here. But if you just want to turn it on, for example, certain client, um, you just click on that client and you'd go um, on and that's green. So it's on for just that um, client. And the other thing that we need to um, know is check. So when it comes to check, how you would do it is you could either go to settings and alerts. And if you go to alert policy, and the really good thing here is you can set the thresholds for service and workstation. So when, like, what is the criteria for the alerts to come through? So for example, um, for antivirus check, when do you want the alerts to come through? Is it when there's two failures, when there's three, when there's eight, when there's 10? Um, and you have that option for all of these mentioned here. So for bandwidth monitoring, script check, um, performance monitoring checks, you are able to configure those to fit um, the needs of the environment. Um, same for workstation, um, when should you get the alert? How many failures have happened? Um, and then you should get the alert. And then actually setting up the alert. So what alerts do you want to receive? Um, bandwidth, file size, manage antivirus, script check. So you can just go through and tick um, what alerts you want to configure. And um, how do you want those uh, alerts to come through? Do you want it to come through email, um, outage email? Do you want it to come through a SMS text, um, recovery email alert, recovery SMS alert? So you're able to just tick through. Um, same for daily safety checks. What sort of checks? For 24 seven checks. So that's a really nice and easy, straightforward, just read through and click, click, click. Um, and then the other way is if you want to configure checks with just, let's say a specific device, um, you can do so by just clicking on a device and then coming down to this tab here. And you can go either add check and um, the checks that you were able to add uh, the 24 seven check. So the 24 seven check runs periodically throughout the day. And the daily safety checks, the DSC check uh, is uh, once a day, I believe, at a scheduled time that you set. So DSC check, you could do backup check, critical events check, um, script check, these are all once a day. And 24 seven checks are periodically at different intervals throughout the day. So you could do it via here, or you could just, as I mentioned for single device, click on the device and just click through here and select what checks you want, how you want them to come through. Um, and the other thing is just while we're at it, so in this pane here, as I click on the devices, and you'll see it's changing, the data here is changing. Um, so you can see in the summary for each device, you can see um, what features it's got um, configured, the hardware details, the IP address, um, you can see any outages for that device, um, warnings. Um, you can see the checks, any notes that have been added, um, tasks. You can even see the asset information. So you can see the hardware information, um, lots of helpful information here. Um, you can also see the software information. So what software is installed on that device. So you've got Microsoft Edge, Chrome, um, 3CX. Um, that's really helpful as well. Um, the other thing that's really important is the reports. So if you go into the reports tab up here, you've got lots of different reports available and reports are really important because that's the easiest way to know, find out anything. You know, if something's happened, you can go into reports, find out something. Um, if there's a certain thing that you're after, reports can help you with it. If maybe your client has asked for the report, then you can easily go and generate that report. Um, one of the very important reports that there is, is the um, department report, uh, under department reports, and then it's known as the executive summary report. So that gives you a report of like, in general, um, of everything. So for example, 
if we go to soft solutions and just select a year, uh, we'll just do 2021. Um, we'll do just random month um, and I'll go OK. That should generate a report. So this report shows it generates a health score percentage um, and it gives like a nice breakdown into if you look here, like how many failed logon attempts there were at that time. Um, patch management, network devices, you can see how many devices are on the network and it's color coded to easily let you know um, which is which, like how many printers are there, how many servers are there, how many switches are there, how many checks are passing, which checks are passing, the percentage, how many alerts were resolved um, in that time frame. It also shows you, I just go down below, this one is really helpful. Um, what are the top five devices that are failing checks? What are the top five devices that are at risk? Um, so that's really helpful. Although we don't recommend sending this to your client um, unless they've asked for it, because if they haven't asked for it and you've, um, you know, you're sending these, then there's a possibility that, you know, they'll see, you know, like something might be going wrong or something might cause them to panic on there. Like, for example, if they see, you know, like these devices are at risk, they might start panicking. So this is good for your own use. Um, if the client has asked for it, then yeah, do send this through, but we don't recommend sending it through to your clients unless absolutely needed. Um, and yeah, so that was pretty much the, just just the basics of RMM. So, you know, adding an agent, checks, patch management, um, being able to take control. Um, and if you do, um, or if you would like like a demo um, more that's going more in depth and or you've got a specific um, part that you would like me to go through or us to go through with you, then um, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to give you a one on one demo as well. And so that brings us to the end of um, just the basics of the RMM demo. Um, do we have any questions that I can answer for? anyone. So you can pop these questions down below into the questions box um, or if any questions do come up after we've ended the webinar then um, feel free to send an email through to um, enable at softsolder.co.nz. But we'll just give it a few minutes. I'll just um, wait for any questions. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions at this point, um, but as I mentioned, if anything comes up, if you need a more in-depth demo, any more questions about anything to do with Enable, RMM, um, flick it through to enable at softsoul.co.nz and we will be happy to assist. And yeah, thank you and stay safe.